My talk for today is be the light bearer. Sometimes my heart hurts. My heart hurts when I read about that we have over 350 mass shootings in our country this year alone. My heart hurts when I read about another black teenager shot down unarmed. My heart hurts hurts watching bombs being dropped on the port in Ukraine. Sometimes my heart hurts. And I saw a Facebook page quote, somebody quote on their Facebook page, you can be angry and spiritual. And I thought to myself, that's crazy. That's just crazy. No, you can't. You can't both be in a spiritual space knowing the truth about everything, knowing that everything is good no matter what, and be angry at something. You don't get to be both. Now, we've been walking around being upset and angry at injustice and all the things that have been going on for millennium after millennium after millennium. That's what we've been doing. And unfortunately, if we do what has always been done, nothing changes. And so, yeah, sometimes my heart hurts, but it's at those times I need to remind myself, wait a minute, my heart's hurting because I've forgotten the truth. First slide, Roddy. Our founder, Dr. Holmes, says, when ideas of evil, lack, or fear present themselves, exercise your dominion over them. There is no spiritual law of discord, sickness, or lack. The laws of spirit are complete, perfect, and good. And yet, we as humans are really quick to forget that. And so we get upset. We get angry. We get sad. Our heart hurts. But in those moments that's happening, it's because we forgot. And so, like Barbara always says, it's not what you do first, it's what you do second. It's my job to catch myself. It's your job to catch yourself. That's what we do. We catch ourselves because there's no way to bring the light if you are caught up in your heart hurting. That is not a place of light. So we have this opportunity to rise. We have this opportunity constantly presented to us to rise. Now the thing about the news is I used to watch the news uh, on my phone every morning, read the news, and get upset about it. And then for a while I decided I was going to avoid that and not do that. And I realized that neither of those ideas bring light. Neither of those are supporting what I want to see in the world. And so what I started doing was praying over the articles. What I started doing was when I would read an article that I was like, oh, and then I go, oh, there's good here, there's got to be, there's always good. So here's my opportunity to find it because the thing about the science of mind is you can read about it from here to doomsday if you don't practice it. And for you folks who are new here, this I just want you to know you are getting involved in a teaching that showing up just on Sundays will get you nowhere. That you really need to get involved in classes, get to know this stuff and practice it day in and day out. Day in and day out. I mean, it's exhausting practicing it day in and day out. I don't know about for you, but it can be exhausting. And yet, that's the work. And sometimes, you know, we fall back in other ways. I, in a previous marriage, there were, I was beginning in this teaching. I was just getting started and I was learning about this stuff. And so I was applying the teachings here. 
day in and day out to that relationship. And then the day came where I said, it's her turn. <laughs> I've been bringing enough to this. I need her to start bringing it to me. And now I'm divorced from that marriage. <laughs> because that don't work. That doesn't get you there. What gets you there is continuing the practice, not laying it on somebody else to do, but seeing that it's yours to do. And ours is to bring the light. You know, some people come to this teaching. They come to this teaching with the idea that it's about fixing them. I did. Am I the only one who came here thinking this might fix me, help me out? Really, I'm the only one here? Oh, okay. <laughs> And I got into it, and things started turning around in my life. My life started getting better. I started seeing the results from practicing these teachings of everything has good in it. Focus on that. Focus on what I embody. Focus on what I'm thinking about. Well, focus on the attitude I'm bringing. Am I bringing light? And my life started to change. At some point, I started realizing that it wasn't just about me. Not right away, I'm kind of slow. At first I thought, this is all about you know, me getting better. And then I started realizing that it was about being of service. And I heard Barbara say one day how she made sure when she went to the supermarket that she smiled at the cashier to bring them a little light into their life. And I thought, wow. That's a great idea. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start seeing how I can bring light into the different areas of my life that maybe I've been rushing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hurry. So I've been too fast. And so I just started looking at that at different areas. And of course, that led to, well, how can I volunteer at the center? What can I do here to help? Because I want to be around these teachings more. I noticed that the more I'm around these teachings, the better my life's getting, the more I'm learning how to be there for others, be better of service. So I started volunteering pretty quickly out in that cornfield and kept at it, helped build this place, just kept volunteering and then kept taking classes. And I became a practitioner. And I thought, now I got it. I'm a practitioner. But then I realized, as a practitioner, it's still my job to be of service to others. I mean, that's really what being a practitioner is, right? You get that license to be of service. You've got to find ways of being of service. And then I go out there and I'm trying to find ways of being of service. But I want more. I want to open up even more. I want my life to get larger still. I want to be as impactful as possible. And then my very, very Jewish mother says to me one day, why don't you just become a minister? And so I did, because I listened to my very, very Jewish mother. She has good ideas. So the more I find that we can be of service, the more I find I can impact real change. When I'm pissed, when I'm upset, when I'm sad, I'm not impacting real change. I've joined the crowd. Even if I think I'm on the side of right. And you know, for most of the time, I think I'm on the side of right. Am I the only one? <laughs> but if I'm doing that and I'm all, you know, bent out of shape, I am not bringing the light. I have joined the crowd. And if we join the crowd, we're not making change. You know, there's, I realized there's only two ways to be in this world. You're either making history or you're repeating it at every single moment. You have that opportunity for yourself to feel the difference when you have reminders. What's your favorite way to have a negative emotion? 
I know, it's a weird question, but we all do have our favorites. Mine used to be anger. That was my favorite. I knew it was my favorite because that's where I went every time. I got angry. <laughs> so it must have been my favorite because that's what I kept doing. Right? And over time in these teachings, I kept lessening the time of the amount of anger I was having because it was a real red flag for me that I needed to shift that I'd forgotten this teaching. Can I have the next slide? If you believe in the divine goodness, the loving kindness and givenness of God, if you believe in your own soul as immortal, forever expanding, that no matter what the situation confronts you, you can be happy. No matter what the situation. If you're not happy, you are forgot your divine goodness. No matter what the situation. That's a rough one. It is for me. But the fact that it's rough doesn't make it any less true. And maybe it's not rough for you. Maybe you're one of these people that, you know, comes into life and you're like, oh, yeah, I have a positive attitude about freaking everything. Well, great for you. <laughs> Some of us have to work at it. So, what I noticed was, is as I got better with my favorite, which was anger, this other one started sneaking in that I didn't see at first, called sulking. It turns out I can be a pretty good sulker. <laughs> but if I'm sulking, I'm not remembering this. And so because I've made such a strong stand about being a light bearer, my magnificent wife, Ashley Fuller Rubin, will say to me, are you bringing the light now? <laughs> now sometimes when that happens, I laugh. Other times, I get angry. Either way, I wind up back at the same place, which is I got to get back to happy. Now, a lot of people, when they hear this stuff, they go to something called spiritual bypass. This is just spiritual bypass. You can't be happy all the time. That's just spiritual bypass. Well, it has been my experience that spiritual bypass occurs when you're saying you're happy, but you're not. Oh, yeah, I'm a high spiritual being. I'm just, I'm happy. Yeah. Everything, you know, and the face gets tense. I'm happy. You know? But what I've noticed is, is that just means I haven't done my practice long enough. Sometimes you got to do it longer. Sometimes sitting and doing one Affirmative prayer, one treatment, like we like to call it here, whatever it is, doesn't shift you. Am I the only one? Okay. That just means you need to sit in it more or maybe try a different practice. One of the practices that works best for me is hiking. Just this week. Okay, well, I got to give you, I got to go back a little bit. A little over a year ago, I found a herbal school in town, and we made a deal that I was going to build beds in their front yard, plant herbs, and we'd split the herbs and the cost of the beds. And I went out and found uh, river rocks, because they're real pretty, you know, and built these really curved, beautiful beds out in front of this... Uh, um, her herb school, if I do say so myself, filled it with, uh, between the two of us, uh, the owner and myself, we filled it with uh, incredibly good fertile soil. Um, I, I planted all these herbs last year, and, and they did fairly well. This year, when I showed up in April to check them out, they were doing incredible. The valerian root was this high. And the valerian, I had, I had uh, motherwort that was that high. I mean, there were all these plants, they were flourishing like crazy. 
And the teacher was like, well, you still have to wait till the fall to harvest them. So I'm like, okay, and I'm showing up, and I'm watering them, and I'm taking care of them. On Monday, I show up at these beds, and a homeless man is using it as a toilet. He's pulling up his pants as I arrive and smiles at me. He has two other friends in his encampment that they have made around this bed. They'd all been using it as a toilet. The beds are now useless. I stood there, and I could hear my beautiful wife's voice go, are you bringing the light now? <laughs> and I got back in my car. I drove to my favorite hiking spot, which happens to be right outside our apartment building, and I hiked seven miles. It took seven miles for me to finally feel that switch go, oh, this really is good, it really is okay. I actually care about the homeless. He's using my beds because he doesn't have an indoor toilet, I do. He's sleeping outside next to my beds because he doesn't have an indoor place to sleep, I do. He's doing this to remind me that he needs help. And he's not getting it because this is where he thought was the best place he had to go to the bathroom. And so I got there. It wasn't easy, but I got there. And I started thinking about that. And I started thinking about what I can do because I have always been a stand for supporting the homeless people. That was the funniest part about it was. Here I am being the stand to support homeless people, and he's defecating in my bed. But that's where he had to go. I have the luxury of an indoor toilet. He does not. And once I was there, I could just let go of it. Okay. I was, um, when I was in California, Los Angeles had raised $1.2 billion to build housing for the homeless. They raised that money over three years ago and have not built a single structure. Do you know why? Because every place they go where they say, this is where we're going to build, that neighborhood goes, we don't want it here. That's not bringing the light. If everybody's saying, well, I want to help the homeless, but not, not here. Who's bringing the light and who's making change? This is what we have. This is where our choices are. So that we can bring something more powerful more uplifting than what has been brought before, than people saying, I don't want this in my neighborhood. So these people were in my neighborhood, and I was going to be okay with that. Because that's bringing the light. And I felt pretty good about that. Do you know? That's what's possible when we really go to that highest place, bring it to the next slide. As the artist weds himself to beauty, imbibing the essence or spirit of beauty that it may be transmitted to the canvas or awaken the cold marble to the living form, so you must wed yourself to love. You must imbibe its spirit. This love is more than a sentiment. It is a deep sense of underlying unity and beauty of all life, the goodness running through everything, the givingness of life to everything. Nobody said this teaching was easy. I never heard Barbara say once this teaching was easy, or John, or anybody. This is the kind of stuff you gotta really take in at a deep level. And for you folks who may be beginners at this, this is where you're headed. You're headed to a life. If you go through, stick with this teaching, you're headed to a life where you see it all from this place, more and more often, all the time. 
as long as you're practicing. If you're not practicing, you may have be having a hard time seeing it this way. But if you're practicing, day in and day out, when those opportunities pop up, whew, what we have before us is endless possibility. You know, I was thinking about how we are constantly confronted by what we think are our own limitations. Ash has a job with um, a, a company called Evolving Wisdom that serves over 100,000 women throughout 172 countries. She's also a transformational coach as a second job, which, uh, where she's, she's got people from all over the world who go to her for personal counseling, coaching. She's also an adjunct professor. She's also a practitioner here. She also volunteers at hospice. And then she also, her and I, do Meals on Wheels together. Because we just want to be of service. Me, I'm service in a different way. You know, I'm in the middle of writing two books, two songs, preparing my talk for this. I have three talks now ready. And, and I'm looking at a third book that, that, I've, that I'm thinking about. Because that's how I like to create in the world. Because this is a world of endless possibilities. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, what disabilities you have, don't have, wherever you are in life, you can create. And in that creation, you are bringing the light. It doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are, if you are in a place of creating, thinking what's next in terms of my endless possibilities, what's next in terms of the goodness of the world, you are bringing the light. I see Robin's artwork on Facebook all the time. Boy, that woman knows how to bring the light. This is what's possible. You can't stop. I mean, you can. You can do whatever you want, but I don't recommend it. This teaching has a heart. This teaching has a soul that is yours to embrace and bring into your life. It feeds me with energy that I sometimes don't even know how, where it comes from, except source, of course. And so that's what's possible here for each and every one of us. And a lot of this is set by intention. And I've heard a lot of talk around intention for ourselves and the center. And I think that anybody who has an idea that this place doesn't have an intention or is somehow lost in what's been going on with its, you know, how it's been moving through this transition has simply forgotten that it's been thir almost 30 years of in same intention in this place. And, and Ash spoke about it in her treatment today. The intention for this place is to be a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom. That's this place's intention. It's always been this place's intention. And it can continue that way if you hold it that way. But this is where the congregation comes into play. It's up to you to hold it that way. But more importantly than how you hold it for this place is how you hold it for yourself. Because I have come to realize that I am a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom. That this place taught me that that's me, not just this place. So I ask you today, does that sound like an intention you want to take on? Does that sound like an intention you want to take on? Yes. Does that sound like an intention you want to take on? Yes. Now ah, we're getting somewhere. So why don't we do that? Are you up for that? Taking this on as your intention? All right, then let's stand. 
Put your hands over your heart and repeat after me. I am a place of peace. I am a beacon of light. I am a tower of strength. I am a fountain of wisdom. How's that feel? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, yeah, I know. You thought I was done. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah. So if you hold that for yourself, you keep walking in here, you're holding it for this place. You see how that grows? That you are now the plants, the seeds, the energy, the vitality of this center. You hold it this, for this place, for yourself. That has to create change. And the next time you are sitting in a place where you are upset, where you are mad, angry, sad, ask yourself or have somebody else ask you, are you bringing the light now? Last slide, please. If you can see God in everything, then God will look back at you through everything. Think about that for a minute. If you can see God in everything, then that's what's looking back at you. Is that cool or what? This is the possibility when we're willing to get past the human into the spiritual into the truth of who we really are and take the time to get there. Don't sell yourself short. It's worth the time. It's worth the time to feel it that way. Thank you. I love you very much.